Silamat Tsieng, binary. It means we are working with two symbols, one and zero. Did I say negative sign? No, we don't get to use a negative sign. So we must have some sort of a notation scheme to be able to represent negative numbers using just ones and zeros. In this video, we'll learn about common ways of representing signed numbers in binary. There are several strategies out there, but the three most common are shown on this slide. In all of these forms, a leading zero indicates a positive number and a leading one indicates a negative number. A common mistake I see with students is that when I say signed number, they hear it as negative number. A signed number just means that we have the capability of representing either positive or negative numbers. Notice that in all three of these forms, an example positive number and an example negative number are shown. Where did this binary code for positive 26 come from? Well, you can apply the repeated divide by 2 method to find that 26 in unsigned binary is 11010. Then, to represent positive 26 in a signed form, we first need to know the number of bits in the scheme. Here, we are assuming 8 bits. Then, we take the unsigned result and pad zeros on the left side until we reach 8 bits. Note that positive 26 is written the same in all of these binary forms. In sign magnitude form, the leading bit has no weight associated with it. Instead, it is simply used to indicate the sign. 0 is positive, 1 is negative. So writing negative 26 is easy. Simply take the code for positive 26 and change the leading bit. All other bits remain the same. The next two forms use the complement operations shown in the previous video. In both cases, begin with the code for positive 26. Then, in one's complement form, apply the one's complement operation to obtain the code for negative 26. Similarly, in two's complement form, apply the two's complement operation to get the negative version of the number. Quick quiz, convert 1110 into decimal. I'll give you a second. I hope you didn't even start. You can't do it. You must have context to be able to interpret numbers, any numbers. Specifically, here you need to ask what base and what form the number is in. In fact, the original 1110 might have already been in decimal. This table shows four different ways of interpreting 1110 and the resulting decimal value. Obviously, the meaning is wildly different depending on what lens you view it through. In any communication, whether you are the sender or receiver, be sure to clarify the interpretation scheme for the codes. Of those three common forms shown a couple slides back, two's complement form is the most widely used. It is convenient for a couple of big reasons. One is that subtractions can be done relatively easily in this form. We'll see that in a later video. And the root of this is that, in two's complement form, the bit positions carry the same weights as an unsigned binary, with one little exception. The leading bit is negative. Let's look at this binary number in 8-bit two's complement form. In order to convert this into decimal, we write the position weights underneath each bit. The least significant bit carries a weight of 2 to the 0, next is 2 to the 1, and so on to the left. But here, at the very end, we place a negative sign with the 2 to the 7. Now, we go through the process of adding all the weights that correspond with a 1. In the end, we get decimal negative 51. This is a great time to notice why a leading 1 guarantees a negative number. The magnitude of 2 to the 7 is larger than all the lesser weights added together. So, if we begin a sum at negative 2 to the 7, no matter how many smaller positive weights we add to it, we will never get back up to zero. But if that leading bit were to be a zero, then there would be no negative influence and the resulting number must be positive. When I say the word negate, it is a simple idea in our standard math notation. 
For example, given the problem negate 58, we simply write negative 58. Or for negate negative 722, we simply write positive 722. But now let's ask it in two's complement form. Negate 1110, what does it mean? It means that we should apply the two's complement operation. So following our shortcut, we copy over the bits through the first one and then flip each remaining bit. Let's examine what we did in decimal. Here, I'm writing the bit weights for each of these four positions. Don't forget the leading negative sign. So this top number equals negative two and the bottom number is positive two. Clearly, we negated the first number and ended up with the second number. On that previous slide, I said two's complement in two different senses. One time I said two's complement form. The other time I said apply the two's complement operation. It is important to distinguish between these. The form or the noun states the interpretation scheme. A number in this form could be either positive or negative. The operation or the verb is a command to negate a given number. So if I ask for 27 in two's complement form, that means we should write positive 27 in this signed binary form. But if I ask to two's complement 27, that means we should apply the two's complement operation and negate positive 27 into negative 27. Lastly, this slide shows the range of possible values for integers in two's complement form. The n in this exponent stands for the number of bits. Let's say we have eight bits, which is a common length for this course. Then the smallest decimal integer we can express is negative two to the seven or negative 128. And the largest decimal number we can express is positive two to the seven minus one or positive 127. To see this more clearly, here is how we would write those extreme values in 8-bit two's complement form. The negative 128 results from using the leading negative bit and none of the positive bits. Conversely, the positive 127 results from not using the negative bit and using all of the positive bits.